Now, celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville, a local show with a spotlight on the 904 with hosts Eden Kendall and Mark Payton, featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Good morning. Welcome to River City Live. Only if this were smell o vision could it be more exciting for you. I wish that you could just smell everything that's on this table. It smells amazing in here. Yeah, you see everybody is crowded into the studio. The whole station is here. It is National Fried Chicken Day. Yes, it is. And yes, Church's is. Chicken is celebrating 65 years. And our man Diego Perez is our ambassador for the day. So thank you for uh, yeah, gifting us with all this deliciousness. Thank you guys for having me. So today is National Fried Chicken Day, July 6th. And Church's Chicken, the home of great chicken experiences, wanted to come on by and give some tips on how to create the perfect fried chicken at home. So the basics to the batter is flour, egg yolk, salt, and pepper. What people don't realize is how important the consistency is. Uh -huh. You want it thick enough to where it latches onto the chicken, but not so much where it comes off after it fries, which can happen. The great thing about batter also is that it really locks in that flavor. Uh, whether or not you have white meat, which tends to be a little drier, it'll really lock it in, keep it juicy. Um, and some other tips for when you're making it is stick in some cornstarch if you want it a little flakier. And you don't necessarily need a deep fryer. You can use something like a cast iron skillet, for example. I like those versions. In, in which case, you'll fill it up about a quarter of the way up. Uh, you'll do one side for five to seven minutes, then the other side. Switch it in to a deep fryer if you have one. That'll be about 10 to 12 minutes, 350 degrees, and then you're good to go. So is this going to be like the kind of version we get at the store? Oh, yeah, that's exactly how we do it. I mean, we've been making this uh, hand-battered, double-breaded for 65 years now, so we think of ourselves as experts when it comes to this. I think it's very generous of you to share those tips. And by the way, if those went by fast, uh, don't worry about that. You can always go to RiverCityLiveTV.com and rewatch that and maybe take some notes on what Diego said. But I, I, I have to tell you, it's generous of you to do it because you know that even though we would love to make that on a regular basis, it's just a lot easier to come in and get <laughs> all of this yeah. at once. And especially on a day like today, you do want to try to put in that time to make sure that you celebrate, you know, nice. National yeah. Fried Chicken Day. You know, my mother-in-law actually does this with turkey on Thanksgiving. She, oh, yeah, she, she, she told us that. Instead of deep frying it with a deep fry, she cuts it up in pieces and does this once a year. I mean, mm. just on Thanksgiving. But you're right about the batter being what keeps it nice oh, yeah, and definitely. moist because Every other chicken I've ever had has been dry. This is the only way you can get. It's get true, it to be and you can it. keep all of the seasoning right into the batter itself too. You don't have to worry about marinating the chicken or turkey beforehand either, and that's a great way of making it spicy or whatever flavors you really like. I love my job. I love my job, but <laughs> I'm kind of envious of you. So, man, thanks for hanging out. There's six locations here around Jacksonville, and we were talking about this new version that you guys is Smokehouse. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to be on the lookout for that because it's already gone. So, Diego, thank you, sir, and uh, we will thank enjoy you. this. You, oh so yes, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we can get some help enjoying it too. In addition to it being National Chicken Day, today's also also. <clears throat> National Kissing Day, and we are not—we're <laughs> not celebrating that right here like we're celebrating this right here. But I do have some fun facts to run by you, and I'm curious to know what you think about these rants. Okay, you ready? All right. Match.com did a survey, and they said 85% of singles say there should not be any kissing on the first date. What? What if there's some chemistry, and it's just like—I mean. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I don't even want to go. <laughs> All right. Well, that's just what the people surveyed said. 66% of women in general say they like to kiss a guy on a first date if he smells good. Okay. Okay. So, well, that Maybe makes sense. Maybe rub some of this chicken I in know, right? But that, that makes good. sense. Yeah. I mean, if he smells bad, certainly it would be much lower. 45% of women prefer not to kiss a man with a beard. So I, I can understand that. A little scratchy. When I went uh -huh. through the Movember phase, it was like people the, in the house, they liked it. But when I got close, like, ah, it's too itchy for my face. I, and for this one, I, we have got enough people in the studio to make noise if this is correct. 75% of people kiss their pets. Do you kiss your... Oh, just me? <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. And Abigail is in my ear saying she also does. So, uh, kiss... I, I mean, square on the mouth. Yeah, I'm people sorry, don't want to kiss on the me. first date, but they're kissing their pet. Okay. Yeah. So let's get back to the nuts and bolts. You and the mister on your first date. Uh, I guess it was a date. <laughs> 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 All right. So here's the last one I'm going to leave you with on this particular subject. You ready? Men who kiss their partners before they leave for work 
have an average higher income than men that don't. Oh, that's so give that where I'm messing up. Guys, before you leave, you're going to earn more. And they also said that uh, 83, was it 83% of people prefer to kiss with their eyes closed? I can't believe that number's not higher. I mean, are you like searching around? Some people or? like to have their eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> like are you like trying to see what's know. going on? I don't know. I have to think about that for a minute. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. So yesterday, uh, just before the show on Dr. Oz, they were discussing something called what he called mini fasting. Mm -hmm. And it's just a huge coincidence because I had brought up in our uh, in our offices here with producer Abigail about this intermittent fasting concept. And she's full on like doing this where you would not eat for 16 hours. That's the fasting. And then you have to squeeze in everything you're going to eat within the eight hour period. And the whole idea is like your body is a furnace mm -hmm. and is burning up everything And those. And I actually have been trying to do this 12 on 12 off, which to me is a lot more manageable, but she's, she's having good success with it. But, but have you heard of it? I've heard a little bit about it, and there was one point in my life where I did try it out, and it was like uh, I didn't. I tried not to eat after, let's say, six o'clock. But here they're saying like people are doing the sixteen hours, so that would mean you wouldn't eat again till eleven. In this case, it wouldn't work for me because I usually do a lot of stuff in the morning and I need a little bit of an energy burst. But if your body can sustain that and not faint. Does food give you an energy burst? Because for some people, food makes you more draggy and tired. So, so in my year, I'm going to need this, this again. Um, what time is the last time you ate, Abigail, and what is the next time? 8 o'clock last night, and she doesn't eat again until noon today. What? So... This has to last <laughs> till noon, people. All right, I'm just telling you that right now. I, I, so it's cool, though. It makes sense. How's the 12-12 working for you? 12-12 works fine for me. I mean, I feel like I can tell that I have more energy, and I, I like it. I think it's a good... Uh, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. 16-8 sounds tougher, but I think that it makes good sense. If All your right. body is, like, burning during that time... I, I'm going to try 1410, give it a whirl, because, again, I'm not a huge breakfast person, but I get up in the morning, I try to, and go work out. And those mornings, i got to have something or I'm done for the whole day. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Okay. Well, that seems fair. We'll let you do we'll, that. We'll 14, try it. 1410. Yeah. But, but report back, because we do want to know. All right. Uh, and when you are hitting the gym, do you do what I do and take your water bottle and refill it? No. I, no? Okay, because that's not a good idea. Oh, you're saying you, you burn through them. The like uh, new ones? No, I actually don't even take a water bottle. Okay, because a lot of people just, they'll, they'll like buy a bottle of water mm -hmm. or they'll have a water bottle and they'll just refill it, refill it, refill it. Well, the, the science is out on that and evidently there are a lot of germs that live that way. In fact, more than your standard toilet seat. In the water fountain or in the no, bottle? No, no, in the bottle. If you keep refilling it and drinking out of it and then refilling it and drinking out of it and at some point, you gotta either throw that thing away or wash it. My parents, <laughs> they're interesting, they're old school. So they'll get water bottles, drink them, then refill them and put them in the fridge. I know we cycle them a couple of times, but I might have to tell them uh, that might not be such a good idea. But my water bottle issue was that, have you heard about uh, if you drink your water bottle, and don't kill it, but you drink it, then leave it in the car for a couple hours, and Ooh. it kind of, uh, it's not even heat, but if you leave it in the car for a while and then you come back to drink it, not a good idea. Well, the plastic breaks down mm -hmm. too on something like that, so it's not it's not that great of an idea. But anyway, just put that thing in the wash or something. <laughs> but I think they I think the study also is taking into account, and I do this. I'll buy a bottled water from like the grocery store or a machine, and I'll keep refilling it. And that's where things get really dicey with the bacteria and so forth. But anyway, as long as we're on the subject of food and diets and keeping fit. Twitter could be your best friend when it comes to being on a diet. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all the social media, because a study done by the Journal of American Informatics, mm -hmm. all the numbers guys say that if you're posting online that you are on a diet or some kind of health kick, you will get more support from your social media friends and followers than you will from your coworkers, your friends, and your family. I'm going to disagree on that, because with the trolls that we have in social media today, I don't see, I mean, you'll get some support, but you get some people out there that have, like, confidence behind the keyboard with the, their anonymous... Uh, but that's just if you're if you're somebody who has an open open social media page. Uh, Most people, okay. it's their friends and their family that they're... And I, I see a lot of people giving a lot of other people support 
when they're doing those things. Don't you agree? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I do get a little love whenever I'm posting that out there, but I try not to post. That way nobody knows how bad I fail. Oh. <laughs> Well, then that's exactly the reason why I think it works. Yeah. Because then once it's out there, there's oh, some accountability, oh, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. So you get a support group, but then you've got people that will hold your feet to the fire. It's like, uh, you said you were going to do this, and you were not representing. So. Okay. Yeah, so I'm so easy. Maybe these people are just jealous.